Okay, Jason, thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us today. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and um, tell us about the work that you do? Yeah, hi, I'm Jason Miles Campbell. I'm the service manager at JISC Legal, based up in Glasgow. Uh, we try and assist all the colleges and universities in the UK with the legal issues that could be a barrier to technology use in teaching and learning in research and administration. Okay. So today I particularly want to talk to you about um, IPR and copyright issues um, regarding releasing um, educational material, not um, thinking of research or academic papers, more of uh, tuition type uh, material, um, perhaps tasters and that kind of thing, the sort of thing that we might want to host on the Cadarn Learning Portal. Um, so, you know, is it possible for you to sort of summarise what the what the position is with uh, copyright first? Certainly. Um, well, first of all, copyright is something intended to uh, almost allow people to give out their resources but still maintain some element of control. So, at its base, that if you're the copyright owner, uh, you can control whether someone copies or distributes the material. Um, if you happen to be the copyright owner yourself of material, you can do what you like with it. That's straightforward. If someone else owns the copyright, you need to get permission from them. And that can be a specific permission or they might give a sort of terms and conditions general permission to the world. Um, and finally, there are a few restricted statutory exemptions that might apply which allow you to use materials. At its heart, that's what copyright is. Copyright applies automatically to pretty much any creative materials, text, artistic creations, graphics, recordings that come up. Um, it, it's there whether we like it or not. And so, it's a, for the most part, it's about getting the permissions of the copyright owner for the particular use you want to put material to. So, if you've produced something, you, you inherently have the uh, copyright in that material. Um, what are the considerations in re, you know, licensing um, uses uh, or reuse of that material? Like the first question that each person has to ask is what use they want to allow uh, of the material. And again, it's uh, a question that's not thought about very often. And the default in law is that if you produce material and you don't say anything, it's all rights reserved. That means you're given no permission to anyone to use it again. That may be appropriate in a lot of cases people are producing materials that actually could valuably be shared. And it's a pity that they haven't thought about um, releasing under a more open licence. Now, a licence is just a fancy term for giving permission. And you can say, I hereby give Jeff permission to use my material for perpetuity. And that is a valid legal licence. It can even be spoken word. It doesn't even have to be in writing. In general, in education, we want something that is more certain. So we do tend to look at written licences and we also like ones that are familiar to the sector. Creative Commons has fulfilled this purpose. And so one thing that can happen is when you've decided that you want to share your resource, if that's appropriate, then there's a suite of Creative Commons resources from ones which are relatively restrictive in, um, in prohibiting commercial use and prohibiting derivatives being made uh, to ones that are open and don't even require attribution at the most liberal so you're releasing to the world in general. The most important thing is to think about what is the appropriate level of openness you want for your material. Of course, openness brings benefits of uh, sharing and, uh, and reputation enhancement for the person who's created the, the materials and also uh, enhancing the reputation of the institution. Um, it also means that you can get feedback on those materials and as a collaborative crowdsourcing sort of activity, then you might end up with a material which is the product of many imaginations and many improvements from the world at large. And again, you can still control the fact that your name is on it. Now, I will say that uh, materials created in the course of employment uh, generally belong to the institution, the copyright belongs to them. Um, however, most institutions will still want to credit the author, and so the, the, the academic or the person who's created the resources may still have a personal involvement in the material. That can be altered by agreement, so a, a, an academic or a member of support staff may agree with the institution that they keep the copyright in certain cases. So it could be, for example, uh, someone going out into the field and taking photographs would like to keep the copyright in the photographs for their own personal reasons, and that can be agreed with the institution. Right. So, um, at the moment, with the Creative Commons, uh, I believe you've got the um, 
license regarding attribution um, so that you, so that if somebody reuses your material um, they need to say they need to acknowledge that with the source but you've got licenses regarding what, what are the other options there's share alike which means it must be the same released under the same license if you create correct? a derivative of the the original then you must make your new version available under the same license as the original was. The original remains, and it remains uh, the copyright of the person who created it, and you must acknowledge that you've made a derivative, but um, it's a way of ensuring if I create a material that um, anything produced from that is also going to be Creative Commons um, forevermore. So uh, it's a way of ensuring Creative Commons happens. That does place a restriction, however, so um, it, it does mean that there are situations where if I create materials and I put share alike, it means, for example, the, another user can't use a more open licence, um, or they, they might want to incorporate in the software where a, a general public licence is actually more appropriate than a Creative Commons licence, so it is a restriction. Um, you also have the non-commercial restriction. Um, again, non-commercial is not defined legally. It has to be defined in terms of its context, which some people find difficult. But if uh, it basically stops a money-making body using that for commercial purposes, or, or indeed a non-money-making um, organisation for commercial purposes, it's the purpose that matters, not the nature of the the organisation. So. Uh, Oxfam running its shops is actually carrying out commercial activity through its shops, even though it's a, a charity. Um, I, the instinct is always to jump to the non-commercial restriction, um, but the truth is that if someone wants to, for example, sell your materials, um, they're going to have to contend with the fact that there's an attribution on the materials that says they can, that the person can get them for free from the original source. So. Um, it depends. It, what it does allow, the, if you omit the non-commercial um, restriction, is it allows people to value add to your materials and then perhaps sell or somehow monetize the, the resource. Uh, you also have the ability, if you want to protect the integrity of what you've done, to use the ND, non-derivative uh, restriction. And that means it, it must be reused in future as is. And again, that can be difficult because Part of the, the new world is the pick and mix mashup, and again, you're stopping people then from improving your materials and feeding back to you those improvements. So, again, perhaps a uh, non derivative, although we all like the integrity in our new sharing world where it's appropriate, then um, it's good to avoid that restriction as well. I've given an example from just legal itself. We currently use the CC BY, the, the attribution license. All we require is that we're acknowledged as being the original source. You can then, if you want to take our materials and try and sell them, you can do that, but obviously people will know they can go back to just legal and get them for free. But if you can make them into something better for another sector, for example, go away and do that and good luck to you if that's what you want to do. If you're involved in business engagement at a university, the fact we don't include the non-commercial restriction means that that's easy. There's no question about whether it's commercial or not. So we've tried to keep it as simple as possible. And so if you want to take a paragraph from a just legal document and incorporate it into some guidance for your business engagement, um, then that's all possible under the CC BY. Brilliant. Right, that's, uh, that's made that a lot clearer for me, thanks.